Hey guys, it's Hannah here and today I am filming a video that was, uh, I got this idea from Linda from Glitter Fallout and it's if you could only keep one eyeshadow palette from each brand. Now I have a much smaller collection of eyeshadows than Linda does, uh, but even within that I have some favourite brands and palettes that I have multiple, like brands that I have multiple palettes from. So I have seven palettes to talk about today. Um, so let's just get through. I'm also going to show you what it was compared against because for most of these I only have two. Most of these I only have two palettes from the brand and so I was like, picking my kind of one favorite out of the two except for one brand that I have so many palettes from and that was the hardest one. If you can guess which brand I have the most palettes from, let me know in the comments. But if you're interested in seeing what, if I could only keep one palette from each brand, just stay tuned. Okay, so I'm going to leave the hardest one to last and I'm going to work my way up in terms of how many palettes I have from each brand. So. Starting with the brand where I have the newest palette to my collection from this brand is Glaminatrix. So you guys know I've had the Nearly Natural palette for quite a long time now. Um, it looks like this. It has a great variety of shimmers, really sparkly shimmers and mattes. They're super blendable. Um, but I recently picked up the Fairy Lights palette. Now this is an all shimmer palette um, and it's got a hollow glitter in it. It's super, super gorgeous, super sparkly, super shiny. And then in that I also made a kind of custom palette with some of their singles. So I have eight of their singles here that I'm including in this as a palette because they're a separate palette. They're the only shades in this palette. So, my custom palette, fairy lights, or nearly natural. This one had to go to nearly natural purely because I've had it for the longest and it has the greatest variety in it. So again, this palette, it goes cool. So you've got um, gray, purple, but you've also, and green, you've got some warmth in the browns, but it really sticks to quite a, natural color scheme it's nearly natural but it's got the pops of shine that glaminatrix is known for hence why i went and bought more shimmers from them but this is such a cohesive palette for me it has me dipping into things that i usually wouldn't like greens just because of the sparkle of those shimmers so nearly natural i said i was going to go in order of how many i had but i had three glaminatrix technically the rest i have two Next, we have Kaleidos. So Kaleidos is a brand I have two palettes from that I bought last year. So we have the Cold Brew palette and the Sashimi City. So let's start with Cold Brew, because it's in my hand. Um, first of all, I love the packaging of this, the lace with the butterflies, it's gorgeous. However, it is a very neutral palette. It is one sparkle, three matte browns, but that sparkle shade is so special. Like it is the most gorgeous pinky silver sparkle. It's gorgeous. It really is. Um, they also don't have names. They have base, radiate, diffuse and accentuate. Sashimi City is from their Futurist collection and I'm pretty sure they are discontinuing this collection. Um, it again has those great mattes, so I'm going to hold it like this down here so I don't play with the mirror. So it's got four mattes and two of those kind of special shimmer shades. One of them is a gold with a bit of a pink and the other is a pink with a gold flip. These ones actually have names that, um, and they create a really gorgeous look on the eye. Again, those sparkly shades are really special and I think, um, they really make this palette. However, if I'm going to 
looking at the two color stories the one i'm gonna reach for the most is the cold brew even though it's really boring browns that's what i reach for i reach for boring browns with a bit of sparkle like that is my go-to so i would keep the cold palette all right let's go for some anastasia belly hills and this includes the oldest palette in my collection that is the Norvina palette. Norvina, okay, no, it's the second oldest in my collection. Norvina is one of the oldest palettes in my collection. It is the only ABH palette of this format that I have kept. And I still love and use it. I still can't see myself getting rid of this palette. I don't know if, like, I don't even use the pops of pink and purple. I just go for the neutrals in this, but they are so beautiful. Dazzling is like my favorite shade. Dazzling is the most gorgeous, like taupey brown color. I probably keep this palette for that one shade alone. I love it. And then something that is relatively new to my collection, it did only join my collection last year, is the mini sultry palette. I was really upset that I didn't get the sultry palette because Everyone still raves about it. So when they said they were releasing the mini sultry, I jumped on it. And realistically, the look I go for the most is this bottom row. But it is again this boring but everyday wearable palette for me. And it does have a silver, which is really fun. It's got the black, which I don't use a lot, but it's nice to have it. Out of these, which would... If I could only keep one, this was the hardest decision between two because Norvina has such a special place in my heart and it has obviously stayed around for so long and Sultry basically looks like everything else I own. But I would likely repurchase Sultry before I repurchase Norvina. So Sultry wins this round. It's so hard. It's so hard. This is challenging. This one was challenging for different reasons. And that is Pat McGrath. So I have two Pat McGrath palettes. One big Burma Gemma and one baby Burma Gemma. So the mini eyeshadow palette in Sublime Smoke looks like this. And then the Mothership 7 Divine Rose looks like this. Realistically, I could get rid of both of these. I don't love either of these significantly. This is still relatively new to my collection, which is why it's here. And this has this shade here. And that's basically the only reason I keep this palette is for this shade here. But I wouldn't repurchase either of them. If I was keeping them and I had to get rid of one, I'd get rid of this one because this shade here, this is mediocre. But I wouldn't go out and willingly repurchase one of them. So for this video, I would keep the Divine Rose, but I wouldn't go out of my way to get it again. If that tells you something. Again, I'm not talking about brands here that I only have one of the palettes. So I have things like Adept and Glaminate, uh, not Glaminatrix, um, Odin's Eye and stuff. And Huda Beauty, I now only have one of. Like, so I'm not talking about them because I only have one. The last one, before we get into ones I have multiples of, is Sigma Beauty. So we have the Ambiance palette and the Beauty and the Beast palette. Ambiance palette was Cement March Made Me Buy It. It is a gorgeous, warm toned, goldy toned palette. Super pretty. It got me into the Sigma Beauty eyeshadow formula. And it's, yeah, it's super pretty. I really like it. However, if you know me, you know I love Disney. So there was no way, even if this Beauty and the Beast palette sucked, that I would get rid of it. 
it also actually is really <laughs> it's really lovely it's a really lovely palette I really like the neutrals the blue I haven't played with the pinks and purples yet but I need to but I would keep Beauty and the Beast in a heartbeat I like these eyeshadows more and I love the like the property Beauty and the Beast was that was there was no competition there all right I missed a brand. I didn't miss a brand. Um, another brand, I have three. Oh, sorry, I missed a, I did miss a brand. What? I didn't, I must have decluttered that one. Charlotte Tilbury. I have three quads from Charlotte Tilbury. I have Belly Talk. She is a gorgeous pinky tone palette. Walk of No Shame, which is like a burgundy palette. And Exaggerize, which is a neutral, dusty, rosy, cool toned palette. I like all of these. If I had to get rid of one, easily Walk of No Shame is my least used. But when it comes to Exaggerize and Pillow Talk, I love both of them. They were both in my April makeup basket, hence why I almost forgot to include them in this. Um, but the one that is more special to me is Exaggerize. The sparkly shade in Exaggerize is just phenomenal. It is like this cool toned silvery color, but it just works over the slightly warmer bronzy shade. I, I love this palette. Exaggerize is my favorite. All right. Getting a little bit harder here. We're now getting up to six palettes. Six palettes from one brand. No, you're thinking, Hannah, that's not even your highest? No. 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 Six. Six is nothing. Six is nothing. Going to be big mama jamma. Colourpop. So when it comes to Colourpop, I have the oldest palette in my collection, the Fame palette. This is the oldest eyeshadow palette in my collection. And it is so boring. Oh, I thought it was starting to smell then. That was, no, no, it's okay. It is so boring, but it is so beautiful. I love it. All of my Colourpop palettes are quite boring. I have two nine pans. I have Going Coconuts. Gorgeous brown, sparkly shimmers. Gorgeous. Making Moves. Purpley, sparkly, gorgeous tones. Love it. And then I've got three quads. We have Head Capricorn in Charge, which is the cool toned neutral quad. Sorbet, which is the pink toned quad. And Dare to Bear, which is the matte neutral quad. Can you figure out which one I would keep? I would repurchase all of these. Maybe not Dare to Bear, but if I only had to keep one, Fame, you can pry it out of my cold dead hands. I love this palette so much. It is so boring. It is so boring, but I love this palette. I love the looks it makes. I love how easy it is to wear. It looks like it's barely been used, but I've literally been using this for years. It's discontinued. You can't get it, but it's amazing. The Fame palette from Colourpop is my favorite and the one I would keep. All right, if you had not figured out by now, that I have the most Natasha Denona eyeshadow palettes. Um, hi, I'm Hannah, I love Natasha Denona eyeshadows. So much so that I have three, 18, are they 18 pans? Yep, three 18 pan palettes. A face and eye palette. A standard five pan palette, four 
minis, a baby, and the star. Four, eight, eleven. Eleven Natasha Denona palettes. Yeah. Uh, I love Natasha Denona's eyeshadow formula. I love Natasha Denona's eyeshadow formula. So I have the star palette. I have the baby Bieber. The my mini dream. The mini nude. The mini starlet. The mini Bieber. The camel five pan. The Glam Face and Eye Palette in Light. The I Need a Nude Palette. The Xenon Palette. And the Glam Palette. Okay. The Glam Palette was the first one I bought. Uh, sorry, no. Camel is the first. The Glam is the first big palette I bought. Camel is the first. No. The Five Pan in f number five was the first Natasha Denona eyeshadow and I finally decluttered it because it was too old. Um, and then I got Camel in a Beautylish Lucky Bag, I think. And then it just continued and spiralled. And I love Natasha Denona eyeshadows. Like if I could only keep Natasha Denona eyeshadows, I would be very okay with that. I would not because I wouldn't have my Indie Sparkles or any of these other palettes that I want to keep. But like one brand of eyeshadow I need the Tasha Denona in my life. <sighs> if I could only keep one, it would be the newest, the sparkliest. I need a nude. I love neutral sparkle. Neutral sparkle is my everyday and Natasha Denona gives it to me in I need a nude. It is stunning. I love it. I wear it. You can pry it out of my cold dead hands with the Fame palette. Strangely, not the hardest choice I had to make. Even though I had so many, it was easy for me to think that I Need a Nude would be my top. Like, no questions asked. It's newest to my collection, but already no questions asked. This is my favourite. So what do you think? If you could only keep one palette from each brand in your collection, what would you keep and why? Let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you I will, to Linda for this video idea. I will link her video in the, com in the description box. Go check her out. She is amazing. She picked definitely different styles of eyeshadows than I did, and that's okay. So, yeah. Click subscribe, stay tuned for more, and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.